so I, when we built this, one other thing we were trying to do was do a luxury property, and it's really interesting, the design of La de Atacama. We're located in the village of San Pedro de Atacama. A lot of the other luxury properties, some are located in town, on the edge of town, some are located far out of town. Um, we're only a few block walk from kind of the main center square of uh, San Pedro de Atacama. But one of the unique things here was building a luxury property. What the architects and designers wanted to do was to build a property that seemed like it was supposed to be there, something that had, will blend in with a natural environment, and something that feels like it really should exist where it does. Um, we realized that people were coming to the Atacama Desert to experience the desert, so there wasn't any point in doing an overabundance of glass and concrete and a modern design aesthetic, which you can find anywhere in the world. We wanted to make this as a reflection of the Atacama Desert as much as possible. So when they set out to design this, they said, we want all the building materials of the property to be sourced within a 100-kilometer radius of the hotel, um, and we want to use as many traditional building uh, techniques as possible. So it's fascinating to walk into this property and you learn to realize that all of the stone walls are all hand-collected river rocks from the surrounding uh, riverbeds in the area. Um, you'll see the walls are done of adobe uh, and thatch. Um, even all the supports of everything, or this is felled wood that they found and it's lashed together with uh, like llama hide and stuff like that. Even all of the textiles in the property are done with natural plant dyes of the area. And so when you do walk in here, it does feel like it's meant to be um, it's part of the surrounding environment, so people are never really connected from this environment they've come to experience. So it's a really amazing feeling to walk into the uh, the Akana, the Awasi Atacama property. Um, for different travel agents on the call, uh, this property, Awasi Atacama, we are part of uh, Virtuoso. Um, this is also a Relais Chateau property as well. So we are the only Virtuoso and the only Relais Chateau property um, in the Atacama. Getting into rooms, um, when we built this in 2007, we started off with just eight rooms. Um, and th for this season, we just built two new rooms. So actually the property now in Atacama, which people are happy to hear, we actually have 10 rooms because one of the issues here is always getting space uh, at the property. Um, I'm going to do a little drawing on this just to kind of point it out. Um, one thing unique about the property is that um, we it is bisected by a small road that goes through the village of San Pedro de Atacama um, called Tocopilla. And uh, on one side, we have a kind of a front desk. This isn't really a lobby or reception area. This is more an administrative office. And then on this side of the road, we have uh, three rectangular suites on this side of the road. But the majority of the property is on the other side of the road where we have um, now the seven rooms. Um, this is where the dining area, the pool, the bar, and all the common areas are of the property. Um, in terms of room categories, we basically have three. We have the round rooms. We have superior round rooms, and then we have the rectangular rooms, which are over on this side of the property. In terms of square uh, footage, uh, the largest rooms are actually the rectangular rooms, um, and then the smallest are the round rooms. One interesting thing about these is that uh, the round rooms, we do have two connecting pairs of uh, superior round rooms and the regular round rooms. So, for instance, these two, uh, say we have a family or two couples traveling together, um, this entrance can actually be uh, blocked off. So this interior patio can be shared privately by the two rooms here. So in terms of connecting rooms, um, they're not connecting in a traditional sense. They're connected to that we have a, a closed off gate where it becomes its own kind of compound. So all these rooms have their own outdoor patios individually, but when we close that off with the two combined rooms, um, they can have a combined space. So these are actually the two new rooms over here. Uh, originally it was just the others and then the three rectangular rooms on the side of the road. When you're booking Awasi, whether you're doing that through a DMC, whether you're doing it directly with Awasi, uh, you're going to know what room category is available. I'm actually going to tell you what room number is possible. And we do have a diagram to show you those rooms. A question is often asked about the rectangular room. So the rectangular room, just because of the nature of the property, if you're staying over in a rectangular room, um, the guests have a key. And this is literally like a 10-second walk across a road. This is not a busy road. This is like a dirt road going through town. And uh, the guests staying in rectangular rooms can walk over uh, into the common area anytime they like, back and forth with their key. Um, these rectangular rooms, where they are, where what they're really popular with is if we have people that have that want triple occupancy um, at Awasi, they work better just because of the, the, as I said, they have more square footage of floor space. So in terms of doing triple occupancy, they're much better. So a lot of families stay over on this side of the road, um, on this side of the property. Um, and then, you know, I would say, it is a common thing that most of the round rooms are going to book up first, and then if it's a real high occupancy time, there might be rectangular rooms left. I mean, it's understandable that the rectangular rooms are less desirable because they're not combined with the uh, with the other common areas of it, but it's how it works as a property. Um, but when you're booking, 
you will know if it's rectangular or round rooms that are available. And I think it's really important that if you are booking and rectangular rooms or all that um, are available, as long as you tell clients ahead of time and explain and show them this layout of the property, then when they arrive, it's not so much of a shock. We do have issues when clients arrive and their agent or their tour operator hasn't advised them that the rectangular rooms are on you know, the other side of the property. Um, we do have issues with that because it kind of surprises them. But as long as people know ahead of time that's the room cat that they're getting, then uh, it's not as much of an issue. Um, just again, for those that are, might be joining late, um, I'm not going to do a traditional question and answer session, so please, if you have questions during the webinar, just put them in the chat pane, and I'm going to address those all in a follow-up email. Um, so now we're looking at some of the rooms, and again, you can see that design aesthetic of keeping it with the local building techniques. Um, what's fascinating about this area is that the Atacama Desert has these incredible temperature fluctuations. Um, it can be generally, it's, you know, this is high, dry desert. The, the valley floor of Atacama sits at around um, eight and a half thousand feet and so during the day year-round you have temperatures 70 to 80 degrees during the day and sunny and then at nighttime it can get quite cold um, the cold season between May through September which is winter time in the southern hemisphere it can get down to freezing at night but what's amazing is that the way these rooms are built using these techniques that have been used for thousands of years there they really regulate their temperature well so the adobe during the day tends to soak up a lot of the solar heat um, into the adobe uh, and then releases it throughout the night into the room, and then the thatch allows the rooms to be fresh and breathe so they don't overheat um, with these high ceilings. So it's an incredible how these techniques that have been used for thousands and thousands of years are still applicable today um, in creating very, very comfortable interiors uh, for a luxury property like a Wasi Atacama. So just a few pictures of the room. So again, we're just 10 rooms, and saying 10 rooms is one thing to understand is that most of the other luxury properties, actually all the other luxury properties in the Atacama um, they're, you know, 40 to 50 room properties. We're being just 10, so in terms of the number of guests that are at the property at any one time and the attention to detail for each of the guests is unparalleled when you come into a place like Owasi Atacama where we only have 10 rooms. Um, so a small size, intimacy, huge, uh, unique selling point of Owasi. And going into one of the other big pillars of our service is our cuisine. Um, it's, we're the only Relais Chateau property in the area, which obviously speaks volumes to uh, people who are foodies, um, know and love that brand and our affiliation with Relais Chateau. Um, this is the kitchen. Uh, it's actually open air, so when guests come back from excursions in the evening, they can sit there, drink a glass of wine, talk with the chef, talk with the sous chef, the pastry chef, etc., see their meals being produced, and meanwhile, it allows the kitchen staff to fully tailor uh, the meals for each guest. Our executive chef in Atacama, his name is Juan Pablo Mardones. A uh, fantastic guy. He's actually been with us from when we opened. He was opening restaurants in Santiago and kind of on that career path to be one of these celebrity chefs in the city. But he just said, that's not me. You know, I'm, I'm about ingredients. I'm about cooking. and I'm about being connected with people. I don't want to just manage restaurants. I want to be in the kitchen. So he came and worked at Owasi. He was the one that suggested he wanted the kitchen open air so he could interact with the guests. And uh, he cooks there um, daily. He's really into using local ingredients. Um, he'll go out and scour the area for different herbs, so it's all about using the freshest local ing ingredients that you find in the area. Um, this picture is actually the chef with his wife, Maureen. Um, they got married, actually, during their time working at Awasi together. She was his sous chef. They fell in love. They're married now, and then she is uh, actually the pastry chef now at Awasi Atacama, so it's a beautiful thing to sit there and watch them cook together. They love what they do. They love the fact that they're able to you know, make a living doing what they're doing together and share it with people from all around the world. Um, so again, coming back to the small size of Owasi, that we're only having 10 rooms, that we were having maybe 20 guests at the time that we're catering to, and with this open-air kitchen, it really comes down to that the chef can completely customize meals for each of the guests when they're staying there. Um, the gastronomy aspect is huge uh, at, Adaka at, at Owasi, um, and these services reflect that. Um, in terms of dining there, um, we do have like two top tables, and we have larger tables, so we are not a property that caters to groups just because of the small size of it and because of the way we run our excursions. So we mostly have couples or families of the most that are there. So guests do have the option to choose if they want to dine privately by themselves. Um, we can set up their table in the corner in front of the fire privately, or if guests make friends with other guests, then we can, of course, set up uh, a table to accommodate you know, two families or two couples, whatever they want. So again, further than that, the guests can decide who they want to dine with, if they want time to themselves, or they want to join other guests. That's a possibility there. Um, this season, uh, we're excited to welcome Barbara Pettigrew um, as the new resident manager at Owasi Atacama. Um, 
we really take pride in selecting the right people to come work at Awasi. We're looking for people that don't that not only have incredible professional experience, but people that have incredible you know a breadth of world experience and life experience, so they can relate to our guests who are coming from all over the world. Uh, Barbara, she's uh, Argentine, so she was actually born in Argentine Patagonia. Um, studied hotel management in Argentina, worked at Los Notros in Argentina, and then she went abroad and worked for many years uh, in Barcelona, actually. And uh, there she was working in, in larger properties. She actually worked for one of the art hotels that's uh, Ritz-Carlton in Barcelona, so she had experience managing large-scale properties, large-scale, you know, global chain properties. And then uh, most recently, she actually was in New Zealand, and she was working in management at the world-renowned Hookah Lodge, which is another really chateau property. Um, in New Zealand, and there is where she realized that this is what fit her personality. She wanted to work on these small Relais Chateau properties, so through her experience working at Hookah Lodge is how she came, became aware of Owasi and realized she wanted to come back to South America, and uh, we were uh, super excited to welcome her as a new resident, resident manager at Owasi Atacama, so um, let's welcome Barbara. Um, if you'll remember anything about Awasi that I talk about in this webinar, remember that Awasi, the, the total unique selling point of us other than the super small size, unique design elements, our cuisine, is that we're the only property um, in these areas where you have them where the excursions for guests are done in private. So when you're booking guests into Awasi Atacama or any of the Awasi properties, um, for each of the rooms at our property, we'll have a dedicated 4x4 vehicle and a private guide for the guests. So if that's a single traveler, that's booking in, they're going to have a private guide and a private vehicle. And if it's a family, they're going to have a private guide, private vehicle. Couple, same thing. Uh, we don't group, um, we don't do group shared excursions, which is the norm with most of the other, with all of the other luxury properties in the Atacama and, and everywhere else, for instance. Um, you know, most of the other properties work where they'll have a limited number of excursions that are available each day that guests will sign up for. And then the guests will go out with eight to 12 other hotel guests in the van to do the excursions, whereas at Owasi, uh, when guests arrive, it's in private. They're going to be picked up at the airport by their private guide and their private vehicle brought to the property, and then they'll spend some time with the guide when they arrive looking over maps, talking about their past experience, talking about their physical abilities, and then the guide will uh, kind of come up with a customized plan for them while they're there to you know, see what they want to see, do it on a timetable that is suitable for them. So if people are early risers and they want to get out at sunrise every day, the guide can do that. If people prefer to take the mornings easy and want to leave at excursions at you know 10 o'clock, that's fine because it's done in private. You're not relying on a consensus of other hotel guests. Everything's done private and customized. Um, you know, there's a lot of excursions in these areas, which are the, the super popular ones that all the other properties also take their guests to. What's unique about having our vehicles, not having vans, but having actually four by four vehicles, is that for some of the most popular hikes in the area and destinations, we don't go to the main trailhead where you'll pull up and you'll see you know, four of uh, the different hotels, vans lined up and all the guests getting out to do that hike. Uh, we have actually over the years found different trailhead accesses, which are four by four off-road to get to, and we have them programmed into the vehicle's GPS systems. So when we do these excursions in popular areas, we'll try to time it so we'll go at a different time when we know the crowds aren't there, and we're going to access these areas via different routes than the other properties in the area are doing that. So again, that's another benefit of having the private guide and the four by four vehicle. Um, and Atacama is a phenomenal destination. I mean, this is the driest desert in the world. There's areas where there's never been any recorded rainfall, but at the same time, it's full of water, actually, and the water is coming from underground. So we have salt ponds, we have freshwater ponds, we have geothermal activity and hot springs and geysers uh, everywhere, which creates this incredible uh, just kind of contrast in the colors and the landscapes there. Also because of the water in this desert, it's been an area where nomadic tribes have traveled across for millennium, so there's a lot of archaeological ruins all throughout the Atacama as well. Um, and a great variety of excursions, um, you know, from horseback riding, which is included in all the programs. That's one thing that people, for some reason, have this preconception that Wasi doesn't provide horseback riding. The horseback riding, we do it at all our properties, and it's included in the rates. Uh, all the excursions are. Um, horseback riding, sandboarding, hiking, visiting archaeological sites, visiting local weavers, going swimming in some of these uh, salt ponds, soaking in hot springs. There's an incredible variety of excursions to do uh, in the Atacama.